All right, so we introduced the idea of substitution, at least for indefinite integrals, as simply reversing the chain rule, which is exactly what it is. Um, we're going to do definite integrals later on, after we've done a few examples um, with indefinite integrals. Uh, but I wanted to say a few words about definite integrals before we move on. Uh, because when you're doing substitution for single variable functions, because you have the fundamental theorem of calculus, and because you have kind of the chain rule, right, and you're reversing the chain rule, uh, you can kind of lose track of what's really going on here, right? Because if somebody hands you a definite integral like this, you say, oh yeah, I do my, I do my substitution thing, I get to my f of g of x, I plug in the original endpoints, the a and the b, I've got my answer, and I'm done. Um, this kind of obscures a little bit what's going on. And later on, if you, if you go on to say multivariable calculus and you look at substitution there, um, you might miss the point a little bit. It's, it's good to kind of see exactly what's going on here. So one thing you want to think about here is, well, what we're really doing is, you know, we're saying when we do this substitution, we're saying, hey, we're going to let u be this g of x, right? And you think about what you started with. So you started with this integral from a to b and you've got this function, right? And you're finding the area under the curve. And, and your function is kind of complicated, right? It's, it's this f prime of g of x times g prime of x. It's this complicated looking thing, right? But you're finding that area. So what happens when you make this u substitution? Well, here's one way to think about it. You're starting with this interval from a to b, right? Somewhere in here, let's say, is, is, is x, right? And, and now you're going you're gonna to apply this function g, right? And so g is going to take you to some new interval. Here's g of a, here's g of b. This x, right, this x is going to go to some u value. u is g of x. And now imagine that you're doing like a partition approach to your Riemann sums, right? You're, you're partitioning your interval and you have, you know, you have your next one here. Here's x plus delta x, right? And so this is, of course, going to go to some point here, right? And this is going to be g of x plus delta x, right? OK. Oh, but remember, remember something. When we were doing differentials, we looked at something like this. We said g, the difference between g at x plus delta x and, and g at x, which in some sense is your, your delta u, we said, well, that can be approximated by g prime of x times delta x, right? g prime of x times delta x. So what happens when you change from the x variables to the u variables is all the, the bases of your rectangles, right? Your bases of the rectangle, they're all being stretched or shrunk, depending on, on the function. Um, they're being stretched or shrunk by a factor of g prime, right? So over on the, on the u side of things, right, if we were doing u and y rather than x and y, well, we should be going from g of a to g of b. And, and now we've, we've stretched the base of our rectangles by a factor of g prime. So we need to change the height, right? And, and so what we have here is we're going to have something which is just y equals f prime of u, all right? So each of your rectangles comes out to be the same area as the rectangles that you had up here. It's just that down here you're multiplying the base by g prime. Up here you're multiplying the height by g prime, right? Either way the area comes out the same, right? Multiplication is associative. It doesn't matter whether you multiply the base by g prime or the height by g prime, you get the same overall area. Um, so 
That means that when you want to do the definite integral, what you could be doing is just the integral from g of a to g of b of f prime of u du, right? And what does that give you? Well, that gives you f of u evaluated from g of a to g of b. And when you plug in the endpoints, of course, you get f at g of b minus f at g of a, same as before, okay? So if you want to, this gives you some explanation for what's going on under the hood, why substitution makes sense. Yes, it's just reversing the chain rule, um, but there's also sort of some extra geometry that's going on. Um, if you want to think about that, it's there. It's lurking in the background. Um, not essential for you to solve these problems, but maybe it helps you understand what's going on.